Hey, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for CreativeCow.net. A very popular question in the forum is how do I create a magnifying glass effect in After Effects? Well, there are a lot of ways, and I'll show you one. So here I am in After Effects where I've imported a magnifying glass picture that I made in Adobe Illustrator. There's really nothing to it. It's just a picture that took me about two minutes to make. I've also got this background full of random numbers. We're going to use some effects applied to an adjustment layer to create our magnification. As you probably know, effects applied to an adjustment layer affect everything below it. So let's create an adjustment layer by choosing Layer, New, Adjustment Layer. Then select the magnifying glass layer and set it up so that the center of the lens is matched up with the adjustment layer center, which is also the center for the composition. This is crucial because we'll be using the adjustment layer center point to control a few of the effects and so our magnifying glass needs to line up with that as well. If you're not clear on this, don't worry. It'll all make sense once we get moving. Next, select the adjustment layer and then go up to the tools here at the top and activate the elliptical mask tool. If you don't see it, it may be hidden behind the rectangular mask tool. Just hold the button down until the elliptical mask tool appears and then select it. Next, let's create a mask by clicking on the center of the adjustment layer and then drag it out while holding down Control, Alt, and Shift. This scales out the mask in a perfectly round shape. Get the mask to a point that is just a little bit bigger than the inside of the magnifying glass's frame, just like this. By creating this mask, we're essentially blocking out any part of the adjustment layer that falls outside the circular shape. This way, our magnification effects will only happen inside of this circle. Let's go back to the top here and activate the selection tool so that we don't accidentally create any more masks. With the adjustment layer still selected, hit M to reveal the mask shape, and then let's lock the mask. This will keep us from accidentally moving or altering the mask, and it also makes the mask splines invisible. Okay, in the timeline, let's move the adjustment layer below the magnifying glass. I'm doing this because when I apply all of the effects that will create the magnification, I don't want it to affect the magnifying glass, just the background elements. Next, let's make the magnifying glass layer a child of the adjustment layer. If you don't see the parenting column here, you can activate it by right-clicking on any panel in the timeline and from the pop-up, clicking on the word parent. Anyway, use the pick whip to make the magnifying glass a child of the adjustment layer. Now, anywhere we move the adjustment layer, the magnifying glass will go with it. In the timeline, let's lock the magnifying glass layer so that we don't accidentally select it. Since it's being controlled by its parent, the adjustment layer, we won't need to select it again. In fact, why don't we just make it a shy layer, that's this switch right here, and then turn on the composition's hide shy layer switch to hide the magnifying glass. Don't worry, it's still there. It's just hidden until we deactivate this button. Okay, now let's get our effects going. Select the adjustment layer and choose Effect Distort Bulge. Right now, as you can see, the bulge radius is too small. We need to expand the effects radius so that everything below it gets the bulge effect. So, let's raise the horizontal and vertical bulge each to about 75. Yeah, that should do it. However, the distortion seems a bit over the top, so let's set the bulge height down to 0.4. Yeah, that looks much better. Next, with the adjustment layer still selected, choose Effect, Distort, Magnify. Now, that's looking pretty good. The magnification is set to 150%, and that looks fine to me, so I'll leave it as it is. By the way, it just so happens that this works perfectly, but if your lens radius is smaller or bigger, you can adjust the size property here to match it. The combination of these two effects creates some nice balance of lens distortion and magnification. Anyway, it looks good, but if I move the adjustment layer, ah, look at that, the effects are not moving with it. That's the nature of these distortion effects. Their center points, when added to an adjustment layer, are based on the composition center point, not the layers. So even moving the layer, as we're doing here, won't affect their center point, and the effect stays put. To fix this, we have to use an expression, but it's a simple one. With the adjustment layer selected, hit P to reveal the adjustment layer's position property. Then, up in the effects panel, 
Alt-click on the Bulge Effects Bold Center Property Stopwatch, which creates an expression here in the timeline. I'm going to use the Expression Pick Whip to link the Bold Center property to the Layer's Position property. This expression simply says, take the value for Bold Center from the Layer's Position values. Hit Enter to confirm the expression. Then, up in the Effects panel, I'll do the exact same thing for the property called Center. Again, Alt-click to create the expression and use the Pick Whip to link it to the Position property. Now, as you can see, when I move the adjustment layer, the effects move with it. And that's because the effects center point is now based on the layer center point. That's why we had to set things up this way at the beginning. Finally, let's give the magnified area a bluish tint, the kind that you might see through glass. So, with the adjustment layer still selected, choose Effect, Color Correction, CC Toner. In the effects panel, set the midtones color to a bright blue and then set the blend with original property up to 70 percent which mixes the blue color in with the rest of the images colors just giving it a slight tint well there you go a magnifying glass in after effects you can animate this by animating the position of the adjustment layer don't forget you can get the files for this and other podcasts at www.creativecow.net forward slash AE podcast. Since I've got you here, I'm going to take advantage of that for a moment and say that if you're local to the New York area or will be in or around New York City on March 29th, please join me at the next meeting of the Adobe After Effects New York user group, where we'll be joined by Creative Cal leader Andrew Kramer, host of the Serious Effects and Compositing podcast. There'll also be other presentations and lots of prizes, so check it out. All are welcome, and it's free. Also, stop by the Creative Cow Adobe After Effects New York forum to discuss past and future meetings. Once again, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for creativecow.net. Does this magnifying glass make my butt look big?